Hi, my name is Abby and I work at um, LICAM, the Leeds Institute of Cardiovascular and Metabolic Medicine as a PhD student and I work in Karen Forbes lab group and we're really interested in research in the placenta. Um, so today I'm going to talk about what the placenta is and why we're interested in researching it and other scientists are in interested in researching it. So first of all, what, what is the placenta? So the placenta is um, an organ that develops during pregnancy to support the fetus and it's highly vascularized, which means it contains many blood vessels, which are the structures that's, that carry the blood within our bodies, including really small blood vessels known as capillaries. And the blood that's in the uh, maternal circulation and the fetal circulation actually never mix, so they don't come into contact with each other. And the placenta therefore acts as this kind of junction between the maternal and the fetal environments. And here it's responsible for the exchange of nutrients and gases um, between both of these environments. It's also an endocrine organ, which means it releases hormones. And um, one example of this would be HCG or human chorionic gonadotropin, which is um, actually what's detected in pregnancy tests. So the placenta will release this hormone and um, this can be detected in the urine of women to determine whether they're pregnant or not. So I mentioned that the um, placenta is highly vascularized, so it contains lots of blood vessels. So the, how does the blood actually flow through the placenta? So at this side, we have um, the fetal side of the placenta and we have the umbilical cord. So this is what attaches the placenta to the fetus. And we have um, umbilical blood vessels within there. So the umbilical vein and two umbilical arteries. And these umbilical blood vessels branch into these uh, tree-like structures known as the chorionic villi. And then if we look on the maternal side, we have the maternal blood vessels and um, so the maternal veins and arteries. And it's the maternal arteries that supply blood to the placenta. So the maternal blood then sits in this space in between the villi, which is known as the intervillous space. And it's here that the, um, the transfer of oxygen and nutrients can occur uh, between the, mother, the mother's blood and the fetal blood. And it's the umbilical vein which will carry oxygenated and nutrient-rich blood back to the fetus from the placenta. So scientists are interested in research in the placenta because in a lot of pregnancy disorders it can become dysfunctional, it cannot work properly or it cannot develop properly. So one example of this would be preeclampsia which is characterized by high blood pressure in the mother and this can affect the pressure of the blood that's um, reaching the placenta from the mum. And this can cause something known as placental insufficiency. So this is where the, um, the placenta is unable to supply an adequate amount of nutrients and um, oxygen to the fetus um, because of this. Other things that can occur are abnormal implantation. So the placenta might implant too deeply into the uterine wall, which means it will not be, um, be released as easily after birth, or it may implant too low and cover the cervix. Another example is diabetic pregnancy, and that is actually what we're interested in researching in our lab. So I'm going to talk about this in um, more detail. So what is diabetes? Um, diabetes is when your blood sugar is, or blood glucose remains high for prolonged periods of time. So all of us have um, an organ known as the pancreas, and this contains beta cells which secrete insulin. So under normal circumstances, when your blood sugar is high, your pancreas will promote insulin release, and then this insulin will stimulate the glucose to be taken up uh, from your blood to your liver and, and cause your tissue cells to take up glucose from your food and um, to lower the amount of glucose within your blood. However, when people have type 1 diabetes, they actually have a loss of these beta cells and um, they no longer can produce insulin. If you have type 2 diabetes, then um, you are resistant to the insulin that's produced. Or as the disease progresses as well, this will also cause a this often also causes a loss of insulin. And this means that in both of these situations, your blood sugar levels remain high. There is also another type of diabetes which can affect pregnancy, and that is gestational diabetes mellitus or GDM. And this occurs when um, the woman has previously had no um, diabetes, but it actually develops during pregnancy and then goes away at the end of pregnancy. And it's also characterized by insulin resistance and increased um, amounts of blood glucose. 
So in these statistics from 2017, it was estimated that 204 million women were living with diabetes and one in three of them were of reproductive age. And one in seven births were actually affected by GDM. So what's quite interesting is that even though this goes away after they've given birth, approximately half of these women will develop type 2 diabetes within five to 10 years after they've delivered. Ultimately, all these different types of diabetes, so type 1, type 2 in pregnancy or gestational diabetes, can affect how the placenta develops and it can affect its vasculature. So how does this actually affect the fetus? So gestational diabetes can cause altered fetal growth and specifically infants can be born large for gestational age. So this is when infants are above the 90th percentile for that gestational age, which basically means they weigh more than nine out of 10 babies. So this is usually between around four and five kilograms. And this can cause a lot of problems in labour, so the baby can be too large for the birth canal and it can cause things like shoulder dystocia, which is where the shoulder gets stuck, or it may be, um, it most often requires a caesarean delivery, and that can in turn have its own problems. Other things that can happen is that it's thought um, that the glucose from the maternal circulation can cross the placenta to the fetal blood, and this causes the, the fetus to produce really high amounts of insulin known as hyperinsulinemia, to try and remove that glucose from the blood. What happens is when they're born and they're no longer getting that supply of um, glucose from the mother, they actually, but they still have all this insulin, they actually end up with hypoglycemia, which is low blood glucose. And this is because that insulin is getting rid of any blood glucose that they have. And this can cause a lot of problems um, after birth. But one of the major concerns of babies being born um, with uh, that are LGA or large for gestational age is that it can cause problems later in life so they will quite often develop cardiovascular diseases, um, obesity and uh, type 2 diabetes. So how, how do we study it? So specifically my research um, in the lab generally involves uh, collecting placentas from healthy pregnancies, so non-complicated, um, non-diabetic pregnancies. And what we do is we um, cut small sections of the placenta and culture them in physiological conditions. And then we will alter the levels of glucose within this uh, to mimic what we see in diabetes, and then we can look at how it affects the placenta. As I mentioned before, the um, umbilical vein is what takes the blood from the placenta to the fetus that has been oxygenated and contains the nutrients from the mum. And we can actually isolate cells from this vein and we can do very similar experiments with the glucose. In the near future, we are hoping to recruit women um, who are at risk of developing gestational diabetes. And then we can follow them throughout pregnancy, collecting their blood samples and also collecting their placenta at the end of pregnancy. And from this, we should have um, women that have developed gestational diabetes and women that haven't, and also women that have appropriate sized babies known as AGA or women that have large large for gestational age babies known as LGA. So they're the kind of main experiments I'm currently doing and plan to be doing in the future in um, my research. So I'd just like to say thanks to my funders, the British Heart Foundation, and my supervisors and lab team and everyone at LICAM. Uh, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, feel free to um, send me a message on Twitter or email. Thank you. <laughs>